first day of rain. Wasn't even in the, in the forecast. And and it's not necessarily optimum today. Uh, no, it's not optimum for a number of reasons, but Ken is on his way up here. Yeah, a two hour drive to get up to Malibu from Huntington Beach uh, or around that area. And we're gonna be working on the truck today, uh, sanding and doing all kinds of stuff, and that's that's just not ideal. Well, you know what the other not ideal thing is? What? We're driving a convertible. Uh, not at the moment. Not well, not at yet. the moment. But we still have the convertible from the Murphy, and we can't really do much with it because it's uh, it's kind of juicy outside. Not really sure yeah. what to do about that. Juicy. Yeah, we're kind of hoping that it uh, it eases up and we can get some of that work done. Uh, we also uh, got a new a top, a new tent top for Kathy's shop, and we're going to attempt to put that on as well today. Uh, not ideal conditions for outdoor activity. For any of those things. Yeah. So that's just kind of the way we're starting we to vlog. We should be sitting inside with a good book, a big blanket, and a fireplace. Hot chocolate and cookies. Let's talk about the truck for a minute. Over the last year or so, I've been working, uh, you know, off and on on this truck. This is a 1997 Tahoe. I had the truck for about maybe seven or eight years, and it was an original uh, SEMA build about six or seven years ago. So we did a lot of stuff to the truck, but over time, it kind of falls to the wayside because you use it for everyday occurrences. It's become kind of a dog truck, the kind of truck that you put your dogs in and you take them to the beach and it, it just got filthy. And like most things, if you don't take care of it, uh, you know, like a custom car and just kind of let it go, it just kind of slowly dissolves. And then about a year ago, I got kind of a bug up my butt to be able to, to do some of the things to it, just kind of start the ball rolling again and do something fun with it. So slowly I got MKW uh, wheels, I got Toyo tires, I got hub filters, I got a number of sponsors on board. This weekend, there's a Ford show at the, the Murphy Museum. And during that show, Rap Institute is coming out from Colorado. They're flying out here to perform a, a vinyl install on the truck, on certain areas of the truck. Now, this rendering of what the truck, uh, what I thought the truck would look like, all black, you know, everything uh, kind of badass looking. It was, it was kind of nice, but it really wasn't what I was going for. It was just something to get up there at the time. Not everybody has the capital or has a, a grand vision, you know, like uh, building a SEMA car, like what the Ring Brothers do or what some of the custom car shops do. The average person kind of builds these cars over over time slowly. And I, that's what I want to show you guys. If you take your time and you you are wise with your budget and you little do a little bit here, a little bit there, do some of the work yourself, you're going to come out with a pretty slick looking ride. And that's what we're doing with the truck. But this weekend at the Ford show at the Murphy, we're going to be doing the vinyl install and I have a guy coming in from these guys. Nostalgia. Nost basically nostalgia. Rod and custom accessories. They're going to be installing a horn in this truck. Not any horn. A serious horn. As long as you do something a little bit each day or you make some progress, you this happens. You get shit done. Eventually, you'll have something really nice. I'm not too concerned about the time frame because I have done cars for many years. For the past 30 years, I've done cars and I've done them under the gun, under the stress, under, you know, SEMA uh, mentality. And this time, I wanted to build something relaxed. So because we have this on the vlog and there's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of places we go, a lot of things we do with you guys, I didn't want this truck to take precedence and it's not. So I'm doing a little bit at a time. And today, Ken is coming up and we have to prep the top. We, there's a few things we got to prep. So when he gets here, we'll kind of go through that. That's that's basically the gist. What's up, man? Hey, buddy. Did you bring a guest? Yeah. My four-legged son. Hey. Rufy. What are you doing? Come here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful because he, uh, he likes to headbutt in the nuts. Yeah, you got to protect your face and your nuts. We are outside with the truck. A couple things we have to do. On the hood is all the old vinyl. It's been on there for six years and it's like caked on and that's going to take some time just to scrape it. A lot of time. Yeah. So while I'm doing that, uh, you're going to work on the hood because there's some rust spots and what are you going to use to get the rust spots off? I'm going to do what? 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 I didn't, you didn't say anything about the hood or the roof. The roof. Yeah. The, the hardest part of the car. That's what you're handling. Oh, because it has rust on it. Well, you're taller. 
and it has rust on it. And, and you're tall. And I'm familiar with rust. Yes, okay. right. Rust master. Well, the basic, the basic thing, I mean, ultimately would be sandblasting it. But if you can't sandblast it, we can do four-inch grinder with a nice uh, wire wheel on it and yeah. get it down to uh, get the flake the flaky stuff off as much as possible. Okay. Um, and then at that point, um, there's some really good uh, alternatives for like a primer. This actually will work. There's many different brands that you can use, but all you do is just brush it on. It's a water base, and once it dries, it turns black, and it just stops the rust completely. And you can even sand on it. You can even uh, prime it and paint it after that. So how? There's probably about eight or ten spots of rust on the on the top of the car. I didn't tell them that. Uh, there's a few. few spaces. I counted twenty. And so how long do you think it'll take between the grinding and brushing the stuff on to be able to complete that? Thirty minutes. Okay, so it's a pretty fast. It's really fast, yeah. Okay, uh, that's if you have a ladder. Yeah. We're really tall. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a cinder block. That's all you get. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do is, is prep this, get this down to uh, bare metal, knock off this this heavy uh, rust scaling and the paint peeling off there, and it's still gonna be a little pitted. But once we go ahead and put the uh, the uh, the coating on it, um, it'll it'll dry and um, it's set up just perfect enough to where we can vinylize this thing. So this thing on Saturday, right? Saturday is going to get uh, a vinyl, it's going to get a wrap. And this is basically what we're doing. If we wanted to do it 100% uh, perfect, of course, we would sandblast it, uh, prime it, and paint it, fill it, and make it perfect. But it doesn't have to be perfect, just basically smooth enough so the, uh, the, the wrap can go on it and you won't even notice it. see me but basically we're taking all the vinyl off the hood and it's a bitch man it's been caked on there for about seven years and I'm using one of Kathy's sculpting tools to get it off and if he breaks it he's dead meat let me check all right So the vinyl off of the hood that took a couple hours. I've been working on it for a few days also, but Ken is still working on the uh, the top of the car, getting all the rust uh, rust spots taken care of, several holes. But he's going to fill them with Bondo. I got to go get a little bit more acetone, a little more of that goof off stuff, and then we'll take a circular saw, sand the whole thing down. Should be good to go for Saturday. Normally, what we thought was a hour-long job mm -hmm. turned out to be about at four and a half hours. Who's counting? Uh, a little more than we expected. Um, a little more on the top, for sure. A lot more. Lots of rust spots. I'm surprised it wasn't whistling down the road. There's some holes. A couple holes that were like that big. Yeah. Yeah. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. It's so fixed. it's, it's ready fully to go. prepped for the vinyl, yeah. which we're doing at the Murphy. Oh, we're going to be going up there for the Ford show. And uh, not only the vinyl going in, but the horn guy is coming in and selling a big fat ass horn. Oh, nice. Huge Where's it horn. going? Um, in, in the passenger side. In 
can see. Yeah, nice. where, where you're sitting. Nice, so you can you sit can, on it. You can put nice. No, it's gonna go. It's gonna go on the motor. I don't know where it's gonna go so far. It's, uh, there's a couple different brands. Uh, Permatex has has a version of it, but basically it's a it's a, a conversion, a rust converter. So if you don't have you know the proper tools or the way to do it, and you want to stop the rust uh, from uh, spreading, um, that's a quick way to do it. You just uh, grind or um, actually wire brush the loose rust, uh, brush it on as a water base, let it set. It turns into black and uh, primer, and you can. Um, paint over it's it. It's actually really can, fast. Uh, it really fast. Yeah. yeah, it's a great process. It just stops it in its tracks. Yeah. And uh, that's that's a good way to, even right. if you don't have the time to do it right, right. if you want to get it right away, uh, you can hit that yeah. and do it that way. can't say it's yeah. going to do much for your hands, though. It's all right. See? <laughs> I'm pretty and I'm not afraid to get dirty. Okay. Going on.